We are going to see the king Soon and very soon We are going to see the king Hallelujah, hallelujah We are going to see the king No more crying there We are going to see the king No more crying there We are going to see the king No more crying there We are going to see the king Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are going to see the King Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Amen. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Amen. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. And God bless every one of you who are here today on our teleconference. And we are here to give God thanks and to give God glory for His goodness and His blessings towards us. We are on um, we are on telephone conference. We're also on the on the World Wide Web, so you can connect us um, also on the web. So we thank God for every one of you, and we praise the name of the Lord for His goodness, His mercy, and His blessings towards us. And um, before we go any further, I'm going to just start our prayer. I'm going to pray and ask God to bless us and lead us forth. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for this time, dear Lord, that we are able to come together for another teleconference service. Lord, we are here just to give you glory and to give you thanks and to show our appreciation for you, for all that you have done, for all that you are doing now and for what you're yet to do. We thank you, Lord, for even being mindful of us Hallelujah. Lord God, we look down, you are God that sits high and look low. And we are thanking you for looking down at us and taking note of us. And we do appreciate you, dear Lord. Bless everyone today, tonight, as we come to share your word. And lead us and direct us. We praise you, we glorify you. And we give you all the praise and all the glory that is due unto your wonderful name. Bless us and make us a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless, you. God bless you. God bless you, Mother Clark. Sister Clark, God bless you. God bless you, my brother David. I hear your voice. And um, Sister Rose. And who's that, please? Okay. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. We thank God for you all. Thank God for every one of you. Um, and we're praising God for, for bringing us together. And we are here to worship and praise your holy name. Lord, we worship you and we glorify you. We thank God for, you know, bringing us thus far. The Lord has brought us from, great, uh, brought from a long way, a mighty long way. And we are here to give him thanks and to give him glory. Because he's a good God. So before I go any further, I'm going to ask our sister Rose is going to sing a song for us. And I'm going to ask her to prepare herself. We're going to read a scripture today from... Um, Daniel, Daniel chapter 5. Brother David? Amen. Can I ask you to prepare to read for me Daniel chapter 5? No problem. Daniel chapter 5 from the first to the end. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Rose? Praise the Lord. Yes. Can you prepare yourself to sing for us tonight? Okay. God bless you. Praise the Lord. So we are thanking God for bringing us thus far. We are living in some really crucial times where we can see, you know, things happening around us, you know. But we can see by the word of God that we are at the end of time. And the Bible has foretold us that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times. And we can see perilous times now 
all around us. We see social distancing, we see people wearing masks, and um, we think that things is going to get better. But if we know the Word of God, we realize that things is not going to get better. Things is going to just going to continue the way it is. But we who know the Word of God, the Bible says, when we see these things happening, we must look up, lift our heads on high, because our redemption, our redemption, joy at night. And we're looking for the coming of the Lord, because all that we see around us is just telling us that the Lord is near to come. And all we children of God, all we need to do is hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus, because we know that he's holding on to us. And he says, I will never leave you, and I will not forsake you. And as long as we have this promise, we just need to hold on to him because we know that he will not fail us. So let us continue to hold on to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he's holding on to us. Never mind what's going on around us. We know these things was prophesied years and years ago. That, you know, we will see troubled times when men will be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. We see times when people would not want to know God. You know, and these are times when sometimes you wonder why even when people see these things happening, people don't turn to God. People are just continuing their own way. They're just living their life, continue thinking of the future and not thinking about God. But, you know, you know, we, need, we as children of God need to remember that God promised that he'll be, he'll be coming back again. And he'll be coming back for his people. He's coming back for the church. The church which he purchased with his own blood. He will, he, things will not always be this way. So let us continue to trust in the Lord. Lean not on our own understanding. Put our trust in the Lord and he will carry us through. We're going to go into the scripture and I'm going to ask um, Sister Rose to sing for us, sing a song for us. Are you ready, Sister Rose? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Sister Rose? Do you want me to sing now? Yes, please. Oh, right, okay. Greetings each and every one. You're doing a deal. So privileged to be alive today. Amen. Glorify our Lord and our Saviour. And um, this song, I have sang it a few times this year because this song, the words in it, is letting us know that we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry. Because we have got the Lord with us. And we need to trust in Him. And we hold on to Jesus. There's yeah. no need to fear. There's no need to fear back tomorrow. Mm. Amen. 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 You don't have to wait. And God never be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. I know that I can make it. I 
Jesus. Uh, oh, uh, we know with Jesus we can make it. Thank you, Sister Rose. Uh, and with Jesus we can stand. And no matter what comes our way, we have to put our trust in Jesus. And we know uh, that is a God who never fails. We know it's a God who will never leave us alone. He will not forsake us. And you know, when we think about the past, we think about the, the patriots of old, those men who walk with God. We think about Abraham, we think about Isaac, we think about Joseph, we think about all those great men of God who put their trust in God. And we see that God always brings them through. David the psalmist says, I was once, I was young, and now I'm old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. So we, we know that the Lord will not forsake us. We will not be hungry. We will not be thirsty. Because he, the God we serve is a God who brings water out of the rock. Praise the Lord. He is so powerful. He's so awesome. He's a God that used five loaves and two fish and feed a multitude. What a great God we serve. So let us be thankful and know that our life is in his hand we don't have any control of tomorrow we don't even know if we'll see tomorrow we have no control over tomorrow but he has because he created everything that we see every physical thing that we see here touch it was created by god he's all powerful he's almighty he, he created the waters of the sea, he created the earth, he created all the trees and everything, he created man in his own image, and all he asks us to do is to serve him. All he asks us to do is obey him, obey his commandment. And that's it. It's as simple as that. And once we do that, he will keep us, he will provide for us, he will open ways for us where there's no way. So let us continue to trust in the Lord. My life, your life, our life is in the hands of God. Praise the Lord. And so we know whatever we do, we must trust in Him. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. And then we will, so, then we will know that He is God and He will not fail us. He is not, he's a God that never fails. But, but, uh, but, um, uh, but uh, David... Please read the scripture for us, please. Taken from um, Daniel chapter 5. God bless you. Okay, God bless. We can pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Greetings. Um, greetings, greetings. greetings. Belshazzar the king made a great feast for thousands of lords and drank wine in the presence of the father. While he drank with the wine, Belshazzar gave the command to bring the gold and silver vessels which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken from the temple, which had been in Jerusalem, that the king and his lords, his wives and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought the gold vessels that had been taken from the temple of the house of God, which had been in Jerusalem. And the king and his lord, his wives and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze and iron wood and stone. In the same hour, the fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's hand. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his hips were loosened and his knees knocked against each other. 
the king cried aloud to the brave Indian soldiers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. The king spoke, saying to the wise men of Babylon, When I read this writing and tell me its interpretation, shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck. And he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's wise men came, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king its interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled. His countenance was changed, and his laws were astonished. The queen, because of the words of the king and his laws, came to the banquet hall. The queen spoke, saying, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts trouble you. Or let your countenance change. There is a man in your kingdom, his name is the Spirit of the Holy God. And in days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. The king, you the gentleman, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians, astrologers, children, and soothsayers. And as much as an excellent spirit, knowledge, Understanding, interpreting dreams, solving riddles, and explaining enigmas were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will give the interpretation. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Are you, Daniel, who is the one of the captives in Judah, whom my father the king was brought, brought from Judah? I have heard of you, that the Spirit of God is in you, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. But they could not give the interpretation of the king of the finger. And I have heard of you, that you can give interpretations and explain enigmas. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you should be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shout with the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let not give speak for yourself and give the reward to another. Yet I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty, glory and honor. And because of the majesty that he gave him, all peoples, nations and languages trembled and feared before him. Whenever he wished, he executed. Whenever he wished, he kept alive. Whenever he wished, he set up. And whenever he wished, he put down. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was lifted holes on the king's tongue, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling house with the wild donkey. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven. So he knew that the Most High God rules in the kingdom of men, and appoints over it whenever he chooses. But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart. Although you knew all this, and you have lifted up yourself up against the Lord of heaven, they have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them, and you have praised the God with silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know, and the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written. And in this inscription that was written. This mene mene tekel of blessing. This is the interpretation of each word. Mene, God, has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed. In, in the balance here and found one 
Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and they clothed Daniel with purple, and put a chain of gold around his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain, and Darius, the maid, received the kingdom, being about 60 years old. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother David. Thank you. God bless you, Brother David, the young man. The Brother Amen. David, the young man who has a passion for the Lord. And I'm really glad for this brother, um, Brother David. Um, God bless you for reading the scripture for us. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great lesson to be learned here. We thank God for his word and may the Lord bless his word to our heart. And there's a great lesson to be heard here about this, this story of this King Belshazzar. Belshazzar was the son of um, Nebuchadnezzar. But before I start going to the scripture, Sister Clark, are you there? Yeah. I wanted to just read a, a short um, prayer for me before I go into the word, please. Okay. Most righteous and eternal Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. We worship and adore you. We lift up your name and heart. Thank you for this blessed moment. Thank you that you stay on your throne and you're hearing us, your children. And we thank you for today when our beloved pastor Scott, oh God, teaches us your word. We thank you, Father, to enlighten us and to make her word known in our lives how we should value. Thank you, Father. Thank you for him. And here is your son who is going to open up the word to us. Pray that he will give us understanding to understand what he's about to say. And I pray you will give him clarity, understanding to God so he can expound your word to us. We thank you and we bless you as we wait upon you, Jesus, precious and thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Sister Clark, for you know for the prayer, and you know God bless you and um, thanking God for His Word to us. You know the Word of God. When we are in a place where we are receptive to the Word of the of the Lord, the Word of the Lord becomes joy to us. And it becomes peace Amen. for us. And um, everything in the Word of God is a lesson for us, for us uh, to know and to realize who God is, um, realize how God thinks. And you know, we should have that mindset of God and understand how God expects us to look to Him, just like um, a mother would expect a child to show her some respect. A father would expect his son to show him some respect. So does God, because he made us, and he would expect us to show him some reverence. You know, um, we expect that of our children, so God expects that of us. And um, we're looking at the story of Belshazzar. Belshazzar was the son of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. And he reigned in Babylon in the Chaldean dynasty from 1605 to 60 to 50, from from 605 BC to 562 BC. That's about 40 something years he reigned. And during his reign, um, if we look back at the scripture, um, he went into Jerusalem and he took the the children of Israel. He took certain of the children of Israel out of of Jerusalem. He also took with him some of the he went into the house of the Lord and take golden vessels and all the ornaments which were sanctified to the Lord and he took them out when he took when he captured Jerusalem during his reign. And 
if we think about his son Be Belshazzar Nebuchadnezzar went through a spirit, a spirit in time in life when you know he built this great city of um, Babylon he, be, he built the great city and um, he gave praise to himself he says this is the city which I created and um, God was not pleased with the way he exalted himself and you know sometimes in life when we achieve anything in life we are to realize that we don't achieve things in life because of our own strength of our own knowledge of our own um, God bless you of our own intellectuality we gain things in life because God blessed us and so Nebuchadnezzar did not realize the blessings of God and um, he thought he was doing everything for by himself but the Bible tells us that God was not pleased with the way he, exalt, he exalted himself and we see that um, Belshazzar the son the son of Nebuchadnezzar the Bible says Belshazzar the king made a great, great, great feast to a thousands of his lords and they drank wine before the Lord they drank wine before the thousands Belshazzar while he tasted the wine commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which were in his father Nebuchadnezzar are taken out of the temple which is in Jerusalem that he and his princes his wives and his concubine might drink therein um, this is a young man Belshazzar who was not mindful of who God is who thought while he drank wine he thought it was okay to go into the to take out the golden vessel which was sanctified unto the Lord which Nebuchadnezzar bought out of the temple of Jerusalem and he thought it was okay to drink with his wives his princess and his concubine and he thought it was all right he did not realize that God is God and God is to be reverence so he lost his sense of reverence to God and he thought he could do whatever he wanted to do so they bought the vessels the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of the Lord which was in Jerusalem that the king and the princes and his wife and his concubine may drink in them and they drink and they praise the God of gold and of silver and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone so this was a very idolatrous act that they did not acknowledge the Lord they did not give praise unto God but instead they did something which God was very displeased with at least Belshazzar and I, I just think that none of his princes none of his wives none of his concubine none of them that drank with him the thousands that drank with him no one could say to him Belshazzar king this is not a wise thing to do can you imagine nobody tried to correct him but they all drink with him and praise him you know sometimes in life we tend to follow the crowd it's not always good to follow the crowd sometimes we must question things when we see what's happening here today is a lot of people don't question what's happening a lot of people just go with the flow oh it's alright if that's the way it is supposed to be that's alright you know but what does God say about it you know we have to think about what we do or what we say and how we uh, perform and the, our acts is God please we can't just live a life and leave God out of it 
And that's what, that's what Belshazzar did. He left God out. He never thought of God. He thought of having a good time. He thought of having a little party, drinking, enjoying himself. But you know, as children of God, we must always be mindful of God. Always. We must always be mindful that we did not make ourselves. God made us. And we must be reminded that He's in charge. We are just the, the clay. And He is the potter. When we realize that we are just the clay and He's the potter, then we have to give reverence to Him. Now, He must have known that those vessels came out of the temple of God, the house of God, mean they're sanctified. And why would he thought it was okay to take those vessels out and drink with his wives and his concubines and give praises? He didn't even give thanks to God. He gave praises to the God of gold and God of silver and God of brass, God of iron, God of wood and God of stone. Didn't give God thanks or praise or anything. But the Bible tells us that that very same hour, that very same hour while he did this, you see, God allows certain things to happen to us and certain for us to have certain experience. But if we, we cannot abuse the grace and the mercies of God, which is what Belshazzar did, abuse the mercies and the grace of God. And um, Daniel chapter 5, verse 5, it says, The very same hour there came fingers, four foot fingers of a man that wrote against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote, and the king's countenance was changed. You see, sometimes when we have this party and we're forgetting about God, God will just spoil our party. Because, you know, God need, God is not going to give His glory to another. And God is not going to give His, His praise to another. And they thought, the Abelshazzar thought it was fine. Yes, we can do that. But there came the writing on the wall. And there was a writing on the wall. And when he saw the writing of the wall, the Bible says his countenance changed. All the happiness, the joy he had, was all gone. Because he displeased God. And, you know, I just said, brethren, we are, our duty in life is to serve God and to please Him. The Bible says, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. All your ways. Not just some of your ways. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He shall direct thy path. If Belshazzar acknowledged God, it wouldn't have been come to the point when they would see the handwriting upon the wall. The Bible says his countenance. He was joyful, but when he saw this handwriting on the wall, his countenance fell and changed. And his heart was troubled. You know when you're really in trouble, when you things is not going the way you want it, and you feel like you're like fish out of sea of out of water. I imagine that's the way um, Belshazzar must have felt. The Bible says that his countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that his joint of his loins was loose and his knees smote against another. He had no strength in his legs. The man who was just rejoicing and having a good time with his princess, his concubine, his wives, and his princess, and everything. He was having a nice time. But God said, no, I am not pleased. I am not pleased. And there came a writing upon the wall. And he was so troubled. You know, sometimes we think about what we're going through today, uh, my brothers and sisters, and we think, well, 
we're in some troubled times and you know we don't know what is happening we don't know what the government is doing we have social distancing we have to wear masks we have to go around with masks on our face like children wear nappies and things and whatever we don't feel very comfortable about the whole situation we have to be in lockdown and so forth and um, we're not comfortable we're not comfortable so it was that so the king countenance changed and his thought troubled him. His knees smote one against another. And the king cried with a loud voice. He cried out to the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. And the king spake unto them and said, O wise men of Babylon, whosoever read this writing, and showed in me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed in scarlet and shall have a, a chain of gold around his neck and shall, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Oh, what a reward. What a reward. Just to interpret the writing on the wall. Just to interpret the writing on the wall, you would have been clothed in scarlet, have a chain of gold around your neck, and shall be third ruler. That means, whosoever do that will be like the prime minister of Babylon, just to interpret the dream, because he'll be third ruler. And the, came, the wise man came, you know, the wise man came, you know, God has a man at all time, and you know, as children of God, God wants us to be at a place that he can use us. He had to have someone that he could use. Because you know, when the king wise men came and they read the writing, and they could not make it known to the king because they could not read it. Spiritual things need spiritual interpretation. When God speak, we who are spiritual can understand but from the flesh the mortal part the physical part we can't understand that's why sometimes you find Jesus speak in, in parables because parables need spiritual interpretation and they came the wise men and they could not read the writing we are the only one brethren who can explain to the world explain to the world what is going on we can't trust the media because they don't know. We can't trust politicians because they don't know. But spiritually, as children of God, we should know and we should see and we should be explained what's going on. Because what is happening around us today is nothing but the fulfillment of the scripture. When Jesus Amen. says, in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times. Yeah. And when Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, and his disciples came to him and said, Tell us, what shall be the signs of thy coming? And the first thing Jesus said to them, Let no man deceive you, because many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Today we can see so much deception. And it takes the Spirit of God in us to discern the truth of the matter and to express the Amen. truth of the matter. So the, 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 the soothsayers and uh, the, the magicians and all those great men could not explain to the king what the writing meant. And then king, and the king was so troubled. He was greatly troubled, even more troubled now. I can't interpret the writing on the wall. My uh, my magician, my suit says, none of them, they can't interpret the writing of the law. What? The writing on the wall. What mean at this? I imagine he was be greatly troubled when God is writing. Right now, if we look at the world and we look at what's going on around us, the writing of God is upon the wall. But can we read what the writing says? As children of God, can we interpret what is going on today? What is God saying to us? He's saying, when you see these signs, look up. That's what he's saying. That's what the writing is saying to us. Look up. 
Lift up your head because your redemption joined nigh. It means that the coming of the Lord is near. And every one of us are to prepare ourselves because the coming of the Lord is near. The writing is on the wall. So none of the great magicians could have interpret. And now the queen, God has somebody to talk to him. Talk to the king. Now the queen, by verse 10, Daniel's, Daniel 5 verse 10, it says, Now the queen, by the reason of the word of the king, of his lord, came into the banquet of the house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor thy countenance changed. There is a man. Oh, praise the Lord. God always have a man. She said, there's a man in the kingdom. You know, God is depending on us. God is depending on us. God needs a man. And each one of us who are ch children of God, who have been baptized and received the Spirit of God, God is depending on us. There is a man. The king is troubled. Troubled beyond measure. He don't know what to do. He, he, he probably don't even know his right hand from his left because he's so confused. The writing, he can't interpret the writing. It's just simply like in the days when um, uh, in Egypt, when uh, Pharaoh had that dream and there was no one to interpret the dream. And they remember there's a man, Joseph. He's the Spirit of God and he can interpret the dream. No one could interpret the tree Pharaoh's dream. And jo Joseph was in prison and God wanted to bring Joseph out of prison. So God let someone say, O oh, king, there is a man that is in prison who has the Spirit of God. We have the Spirit of God. The world is looking to us. The world is looking at us and to us to interpret what is going on today. And we have the Spirit of God can understand that it means that the coming of the Lord is near. People are saying, oh, when this lockdown finish and when this um, coronavirus and this um, COVID-19 is over, we'll be back to normal. It's not going to be that way. You're dreaming. Because if you can see, if you can read, you can only say that if you can read the writing on the wall. I can read the writing on the wall. Can we read the writing on the wall? So, as Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, and he had dreams about the famine, and Joseph told him that there will be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And so because of that, he prepared himself for the great famine where that was about to hit Egypt. And he, did, he gave the dream. He gave Pharaoh the interpretation of the dream. So Daniel was called. The queen said, there was a man. God always have a man. Yes. Let thy thought not trouble thee. Let thy countenance not be changed. There is a man in the kingdom. In whose is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom like the God wisdom of God who was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of magicians astrologers Chaldeans and soothsayers so because when we are in God and when the spirit of God in us it gives us it enlighten us it opened our understanding. We are enlightened when the Spirit of God is with us. We are not like the world. We are not like the world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. There is something inside of us that make us separate us from the world. And so Daniel, the queen, realized there is someone there in, Bab in, in Babylon who has the Spirit of God. And it says, for as much as, as excellent spirit and knowledge, understanding, interpretation of dreams, and showing hard sentences and dissolving doubt were found in the same Daniel, whom 
the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called to show the interpretation. Then was Daniel brought before the king, and the king spake unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, bought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee, that the Spirit of God is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. When we are children of God, there has to be something in us that the world can see. We can't be just like that. There has to be something. There has to be some kind of wisdom, understanding that is in us, that is not in the world. How else can we be separated? We can't think like the world think. We can't live like the world think. We can't have, we can't just live not knowing, not, not asking God, not being with God, not reverencing God. We have to show reverence to God. When we live and we show reverence to God, God impart His wisdom, His knowledge, His understanding. He illuminates us. And so Daniel was such that he was illuminated because there was a time that they were told um, that Daniel should not pray to any other God but to the king. But Daniel continued to pray to the king, because, pray to God because he knew the God that he served. He said, I have heard that the Spirit of God is in thee and, the, and that light and understanding excellence of wisdom is in thee and now the wise men the astrologers that have bought before me they should read this they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof but they could not show the interpretation of this thing so none of them could interpret the writing on the wall there is a writing on the Amen. wall, brethren. There is a writing on the wall. There is a writing on the wall. And Daniel answered the king and said, and the king said to Daniel, I have heard of thee that thou can make interpretation and dissolve doubt, and thou canst read the writing and make it known unto me the interpretation thereof. Thou shalt be clothed in, with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about thy neck, and shall be third ruler in my kingdom. Therefore, the king is saying, you will be promoted. Daniel, if you can read the writing on the wall, if you can just tell me because I can't sleep, I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, I'm confused. I don't know what I don't know what all this mean. I, I can't read the writing. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, what do I do? So. He was in he was he was in darkness, he couldn't understand. He was bewildered. The king was bewildered, he needed an answer. So he promised Daniel if you can read this interpretation, you'll be clothed in scarlet, a chain of gold, and you'll be third. In other words, you'll be promoted. You'll be promoted in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said unto the king, Let thy gifts be unto thyself and give thy reward to another. Yet I will read the writing of the king and make known to him the interpretation. In other words, Daniel is saying, uh, even though these are very attractive gifts, and you know, anybody would, I, I don't need your gifts. You know, he's not thinking about himself. And this is what it means when we serve God. We don't serve God in a selfish manner. We serve God in spirit and in truth, unselfishly. Daniel did not care about having um, having been weighed in a purple um, garment, a chain around his neck. He didn't care about those things. He cared about the Lord. He cared about serving the Lord and and that is one thing that we should do as children of God we should have the most important thing for us is to serve God is to please God 
is to honor God is to give him the praise and the glory that's the most important thing that's why we are created and we we have aspiration hope to go to where to in heaven one day and that is what we're going to do worship the Lord praising him in the beauty of holiness so Daniel was about to interpret the dream of the king and he said oh king most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and a majesty a glory and honor and for the majesty that he gave him all people nation languages trembled and feared before him whom he would slew and whom he kept alive and whom he would set up and whom he would put down so Nebuchadnezzar God made a mighty powerful man that he had uh, such power over nations and language and you know when, when God exalts us it's the more time that we should be giving him thanks and we should be giving him praise because to him who much is given much is expected but sometimes in life the more God gives us is the less we thank him is the less we serve him is the less time we have for him is the less time we have to pray is the less time we have to glorify him is the less time we have because we are thinking about ourselves but God wants us to think about what he has done for us where he's taken us from and each one of us, when we look at ourselves, sometimes we see and we say, oh, things could be better. Of course, things could be better, but things could be much worse. And, you know, when we live, we count our blessings. If we get up and say, Lord, I thank you for waking me up today. I'm in my right mind. I can hear, I can see, I can walk, I can talk, I can move my hands. What a blessing you know plus whatever comes after what a blessing all we need to do is thank him and show him our, our appreciation but Nebi, but Belshazzar never thought of that Nebuchadnezzar never thought of that so Daniel go now to show Nebi, um, Belshazzar what what his father did that is, God exalted his father king of Babylon he had power of all people, all nation, all languages. They all feared and trembled when they hear about Nebuchadnezzar. Because he was so powerful. But he did not give glory to God. And each one of us, we are created to, for his praise. We are created to, for his glory. So it says, Nebuchadnezzar, his heart was lifted up and his mind was hardened with pride pride and he was disposed of his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven out from the sons of men can, can you imagine king of Babylon no matter how big or how great we think we are God can bring us down God can take us from the highest to the lowest and he can also take us from the lowest to the highest those that humble themselves the Bible says they will be exalted and they that exalt themselves shall be humbled so what is good for us humble before the Lord so he was driven from among men and his heart was made like the heart like beasts and he dwelt among wild ass asses and they fled and they fed him in grass like oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till he knew the most high rule the kingdom of men and I pointed whosoever he will so he, Daniel was saying to Belshazzar your father Nebuchadnezzar was a great man, mighty man in Babylon and in all the world that their own nation feared because of him. 
but he exalted himself. If he gave glory to God, he would have had his kingdom. But because he exalted himself, God, God brought him down. God brought him down. And he went, was driven from men, and his heart was like the heart of beasts. Imagine a king, a great king, that he came down to be like, like the beast, eating grass. So brethren, it's a lesson for us. It's a lesson for us. Humility. So anyway, going on, and it says, Thou son, thou, and thou his son, Belshazzar, you have not humbled your heart. Yes. Though thou knew this. So you knew what happened. Yeah. Imagine, you knew what happened to your father. He was a great king, but he exalted himself with pride, and God brought him down to live among beasts. And you did not understand. You did not realize. You did not know. You did not show reverence to God. You went and took the golden vessels from the house of what came from the house of the Lord and drink with your wives and your concubines and your princes. So going on, Daniel read the interpretation for Belshazzar. So Daniel said unto him in verse 24, Then the part of the hand was sent for, for this was written. This is written, Mini, mini, tikesh opasin. Opasin. You have sinned. Now tiki, mini, mean God has numbered your kingdom and is finished. Till catch, thou has been weighed in the balance and found wanting. Paris, the kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Persians, that kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. The, then the Lord commanded. Then Belshazzar commanded. They closed Daniel with scarlet, put a chain around his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be third in ruler in the kingdom. So even though Daniel read the writing on the wall, Belshazzar promoted him, promoted him to be third ruler, gave a chain around his neck. But the moral of this lesson, my brethren, is that let us serve God in spirit and in truth. Let us serve God with great humility because He's God. He's so good to us and He's so He has done so much for us. When we think and we worry, people are worried. People are so worried about COVID-19. COVID-19 is not the problem. What we need to do is to serve God. That is the problem because yeah. the, 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 the penalty for forgetting God is a great penalty. We see that Belshazzar's kingdom was taken from him and he died because he did not give God glory. Don't worry about COVID-19. Don't worry about a vaccine and mandatory vaccine and all these things. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on God. Worship Him. Give Him thanks. All we need to do is give Him thanks and give Him glory. That's all we need to do. It is so... What can be more... What can be harder than to give God thanks? and to give him praise and acknowledge him, reverence him. That is it. If Belshazzar showed reverence to God, Belshazzar would not have lost his kingdom. Belshazzar would not have been, uh, Nebuchadnezzar would not have been out in the field eating grass like an animal if he showed honor to God. And as long as we reverence God, show honor to God, God will bless us. God will bless us in a most spectacular way. We don't need to live in fear. 
Children of God should not live in fear. Bible says perfect love cast out fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear. Despite what is going on around us. God give us a spirit of of perfect mind. A, a, a spirit of faith. A spirit of love. A spirit of understanding. Uh, a spirit of grace. His grace and mercy. His grace and mercy. What would we be without the grace and mercy of God? We are, we are alive today because of the love of God. Whatever we do, whatever we achieve in life, we achieve it because of the mercies of God. And all God... It's, if, you, if, we, if we have children and we give any gifts to our children, we would expect our children to be grateful and say thank you. Even a friend, if we give anything to a friend, we would expect them to be grateful and say thank you. That's all God is asking us to show gratitude, to show thanks. And it is so hard. What is going on around us now? People are just thinking about, oh, what is about tomorrow? They just, people are just thinking right now, I want to go back to my life. I want to live what I normally, I need to do what I, they're, they're not thinking about God. They just, I, I need to continue to do what I used to do. I need to go on to play, to, to, to go watch my football, play my games, whatever, go to my parties, go to do, the, go do this, do that. You know, go to my cinema to watch my movie, go to my restaurant go to restaurants and all those things nobody's thinking about God no one is thinking about God think about the, the election in the United States if I may just mention that we have Trump and Biden who you know both running for office and you know people are people even church people are getting so involved in this election some are for Trump some are for Biden but how, much, how many of them are for Christ Oh, they glorify these men. They glorify these men. Oh, 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 he's so great. He's so wonderful. He's so this, he's so that. I'm on both sides of the fence. But who, who's for Jesus? Who's for Jesus? They give more glory to these two men. And they're just men. They're no different. They're just men. But they wouldn't give glory to God. They would, some of them wouldn't have time to give that glory to God as they would give to men. But, brethren, we need to serve God. We need to give glory to God. We need to worship God. We need to lift up God. We need to praise Him. We need to live for Him. We need to lift up the gospel banner. And also we are to know that sometimes it's not everything that is made law is, is right in the sight of God. There are times when we need to choose who we will serve. The Bible says we cannot serve two masters. If we serve two masters, we will love one and hate the other. We have to serve the God. We are created in His image. We are created to serve God. We are not created to serve man. So we are to give glory to God at all times. And we are to seek God and we are to live for Him. The, the problem with this world is that people are just living for themselves. Hard to say, but it's true. People are just living for themselves. It's always just me, myself, and I. But you know what God says? God says that um, this world is not our home. We are just passing through. We are, we are strangers and we are sojourners. This is not our home. Not only that, but this life is not the life. Our life is with Christ. We are created in His image. And we are we who are saved by His grace. We know that we are easing us. And when He's with us, we know that He's for us. And the Bible says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Why would we need to fear? Why would we need to worry? Why worry? What can separate us from the love of God? What can separate us from the grace of God? Neither principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. We are more than conquerors. Brethren, I encourage us to continue to serve God. 
and lift up the gospel and a banner lift up the gospel banner we are ch we are children of God we are to proclaim the gospel of God the gospel is the birth death and resurrection of Jesus Christ in that G God came down among men live among men showing us example of how we should live showing us how we should behave so Paul says let this mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus if anything that we crave after today we should crave after having a mind of Christ of all the things we crave after we should crave after being like Jesus being like him we want to be like Jesus we want to have the mind of Christ one great commandment is that we should love each other love your neighbor as yourself that's a very hard thing to maybe very hard for us to understand but Jesus says if we can love if we have love 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 is the key love is the key that opens every door love when we have love love when we have love in our heart fear cannot come in and no matter what happens fear cannot penetrate love darkness cannot penetrate light truth truth there's no laws against the truth you cannot you, you, the truth cannot be destroyed the truth is in, is in us it's God it reigns it cannot be changed so let us brethren learn a lesson from Belshazzar lifted up himself thought he could do what he wants ignoring the God who saved him who, who exalted him who made him king forget about all that and think that he could just do anything say anything live anyhow the Lord God of heaven reign over the children of men and God yes. sees and knows every one of us the Bible says God is so manipulous in how he looks at us the Bible says, even though I have very hair on our head, that God numbers the hair that is on our head. How great is that God? How marvelous is that God? I, I could never count them. But God knows them. God says, do you see the sparrow? Not one of them fall without his knowledge. God is good. God is great. God is wonderful. Let us give him the praise let us give him the glory and I just encourage us because what we see the writing on the wall which Belshazzar saw there's a writing on the wall now and we are to know the writing of the wall what it is telling us what is the writing telling us the world is confused politicians are confused kings prime ministers presidents they were all confused but as children of God we know the writing on the wall we can interpret the writing on the wall the writing on the wall is telling us the days are numbered God is coming back he's coming back again he went away not to stay he's coming back again he said Amen. in my father's house listen to these comforting words brethren before I close he says in my father's house there are many yes, mansions many if it was not so I would have told you I gone to prepare a place that where I am he may be also I'm gone he's gone to prepare a place for us that where he is we may be also oh glory be to God is that wonderful isn't that wonderful Amen. we have a hope virgin this you know the, the Bible says the word says if in this life only we have hope we will be men most miserable imagine that if we, when we die, when we, when we depart this earth, there was nothing, there was no hope, there was nothing. 
we wouldn't talk about God. We wouldn't talk about church. We wouldn't talk about righteousness. We wouldn't talk about hope. We wouldn't talk about peace. We wouldn't talk about anything. We would be so miserable if in this life only we have hope. But we have hope, brethren. Not only in this life, but we have a hope in the life to come. We have a blessed hope. Amen. And I, I, I'm, I'm rejoicing. I'm rejoicing despite all this coronavirus, the, um, the, 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 the COVID-19 and all this foolishness. I have to say it's foolishness because I'm not really into all this scaremongering thing. Um, I always say that keep your immune system up. Eat, eat well. Look after your immune system. You, it is all well. It will be well with you. And not only that, the God of heaven we serve will bless you, will cover you. You will not die from COVID-19. You will not die from coronavirus. Because God is with you. And that is the assurance that we must have. Don't let any scaremongering. Don't, don't follow the scaremongering. Look after yourself. Trust in God. And God will bring you out. As he bring us all out. He will not fail us brethren. Keep trusting in the Lord. Keep serving the Lord. Keep leaning on him. Call upon him. Glorify him. No matter what's going on around us. God is in charge. God is in charge. You see what, what you see these um presidents, prime ministers and all these, they're no different from Belshazzar. And when God ready and put the writing on the wall, but let's pray for them. You know, as a, a pastor was saying today, we must pray for these rulers and these leaders. We must pray for them because they need our prayer. They need uh -huh. our prayer, Bertrand. They are no, they're, they're just men. Their breath, their, their breath is in their mouth. And if God, whenever God says God can take the breath. So then they're, they're not great. They're not, they, they, you know, we need to, we, we pray for them. That God may save them. Because they are lost. But we thank God for we are saved. We give God praise. We give God thanks. God bless you today, my brethren. Um, may we continue to serve the Lord. May we continue to live for the Lord. And may we continue to trust in Him. And let us not live a life of fear. This is my last thought to us. Let us not live a life of fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear. We are children of God. God did not give us a spirit of fear. Let us not live a life of fear. But let us have put our confidence in God that he's able to see us through. God bless you. Brother Clinton, are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Can you close us in prayer, please, sir? Yes, sir. <coughs> Most gracious and eternal Father, as we come to the end of this service tonight, O oh God, you will be one who is keeping us alive. You the one who wakes up this morning. Now we thank you for your loving kindness towards your children. We thank you, dear Father, for grace and mercy. We pray, O oh God, that whatever is this virus may be doing, O oh God, I know you have got the antidote. And I pray, dear Lord, for the, the doctors and the nurses who are in the front line, O oh God. We pray for our leaders, we pray for our neighbors, we pray for our brothers and sisters. We pray for each and every one, the little children, O oh God, who have caught up in such um, a manner like the God to knife the guns, O oh God. Oh, I'm asking you to touch them. I'm asking you to guide them. I'm asking you to protect them, dear Father, in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'll be coming back to receive you as by myself. I thank you to never again, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless all your, my brethren who are here today in this teleconference. May the Lord richly bless you. And uh, just go in the strength of the Lord. Trust in the Lord.